Hello, so this is the second abacus tutorial. Um, today we're going to look at vibration uh, analysis or frequency analysis. So, after opening up abacus, we want to start again, start a session, create our model database. Um, so, here we have it. We're going to start by building a part, or for our case, it will be a frame. So, if we click on create part. Some of the options that we want to change this time are we can call this our frame. We actually want to model this in two dimensions, and our base feature will be a wire. We can set the approximate size to around 20 to help in drawing. So, I'll draw the basic shape to begin with and then dimension it. So, we have our base, we have our supports, and we have our roof. So this is the basic shape of our frame. Um, so now I want to dimension to ensure that it is correct. So these are going to be the same height. So I'm going to set that value to naught. Um, in fact, I'll do a few other things first. I'll dimension this edge. It's going to be 5. The dimensions between these two is going to be naught. <coughs> The height of the frame will also be 5. And these two edges will be 5 also. So I can set this value to 5 as well. And then I just want to ensure that these two, these two nodes are centered above the base. So if I click on these two, I can type in 2.5. Uh, just to be sure, I can check that. That's 2.5. So if the dimensions turn yellow or purple, sorry, that means the structure is overdefined. So we can actually just remove the previous dimension by pressing Ctrl Z. So now we have our frame. So we can get that done. So we have our part. Our next step is to create our material. So I'll go to the properties module and create a material. Let's use steel for this case. We'll set the density to around 7,800 kilograms per meter cubed, and the elasticity or the Young's modulus to about 210 pascals or gigapascals, should I say, with a relatively low Poisson's ratio. So now we've created our materials or our material. Um, we then want to produce or create a profile. So the profile for our frame will be a T-section. So we can call this T-section and select the shape T. Continue. So here we want to dimension our T-frame. So um, these are as follows: 0.25, 0.25. 0 0.125, 0 0.05, and 0.05. Okay, so we've created our profile. We then want to create a section. So we can double click on section, and we're going to call this my frame section. This will be a category beam and a type beam also. We can leave these options as they are. Leave the section integration drawing analysis profile name as follows. Okay. So now we've created our part, created our material, our section, and our profile. We want to assign our section to our frame. So if we open up the frame tree and double click on section assignments, we want to assign this to the entire frame. Um, frame section, just check the right options selected. Okay. So now we've applied our section on profile to our frame. Our next step is to assemble the model. So if we go into the assembly module and create an instance, there's only one part, so we can leave the options as follows. Ensure that dependent mesh on part instance type is selected. And click OK. So now we've assembled the module. For the model, we want to create a loading step or an analysis step. So we go into the step module create a step 
this is going to be called analysis. The procedure type is going to be linear perturbation and the frequency analysis. We only want to consider the first 10 eigenvalues of this structure. So we change this using the option number of eigenvalues requested and we want to select 10. Okay, so now we've created our step. Our next step is to create or add our boundary conditions. So if we go into the load module and create a boundary condition, boundary condition. we want to create two boundary conditions. The first will be a pinned node. Um, so we can name that pin. Type is going to be displacement rotation. We can select the bottom left node. And click OK. For this node, we want to fix the x and y displacements. Okay. Our second boundary condition is our roller. This is going to be on our far right node. So we can select that node. And we only want to fix the y translational degree of freedom. Okay. So now we have our two boundary conditions set. Our final step before running is to mesh. So to mesh the part, we want to ensure that the beam is going to be assigned uh, beam elements. Again, if you see this error or this uh, warning message, just select part. So we want to assign an element type. So we can select this region, um, standard. We want to ensure that the family is beam, and that's okay. That's perfect. We're going to seed the edges individually, so we can click seed regions, select the whole geometry, and we can uh, seed it by number. So if I select six uh, seeds, number of, or number of elements, and apply, we can see that the nodes, where the nodes will be placed or the elements will be placed. So we can then mesh our part and we have a part there. If you highlight the um, the model you can see where the nodes are. So our last step is to apply or is to apply the truss element to our frame. So if we go into the property module we just want to ensure that we can view this. So if we go into view, part display options and we want to highlight render beam profile we want to apply that and click OK. So we want to assign our beam orientation. So to do this we can select our assign beam orientation option and select that. We're going to highlight the entire beam and click done. We're going to leave the tangent vector as default so just click enter and OK. So here we have our truss or T section. So you're going to want to check that the trusses are all orientated in the correct direction. If they are not you can rotate the trusses by 180 degrees using the assigned beam truss tangent option. So they seem to be okay for me so I can continue. So we now want to create a job. So we go into the job module, click create job, and leave it as job one, and click continue. Um, all these options are okay. So we can then submit our job. And monitor the job while it's running. We just want to ensure there's no errors during the runtime. And that has gone quite quickly with no errors. So we can then view our results. So in viewing our results, um, I prefer when the background is actually white. So I'll do that quickly. So in viewing our results, we can use the plot deform shape. So as we can see, this is the first eigen mode of the frame. Um, we can compare this to the original shape by selecting 
the allow multiple plot states, and selecting the original default undeformed configuration. So we can see how this mode compares to the uh, undeformed shape. We we can also plot the nodal values or where the nodal values lie by clicking on common options. Uh, we want to click on labels and then show node symbols. I'll select a um, slightly darker color to make it easier to see. Apply. So we can see where our nodes, where our nodes lie now. Um, in extracting results, the best way to do this is to go into our output database, open up our job, and open up our history output. And you can see here all the results that we have. So we're most interested in the eigenfrequency and eigenvalue. So I'm going to right click and save as. I'm going to save that as our frequencies. Okay, and I'm going to save these as our eigenvalues. Okay, so we can then go into our XY data um, and view these values as need be. Or we can export these to a file. So to do this, we want to go on report XY and we can just check where the file is going to be exported to. So I am going to select um, my C folder users Sam and just put that in my home directory. I'll call this Abacus Frequency Analysis. Okay. So we then want to apply the eigenvalues and the frequencies and click OK. We can then open this output in any text editor. So if I go to my documents, find where the file is saved, Abacus Frequency Analysis. So I can then open this with for me, in my case, it would be Notepad++. And here we have our eigenvalues and our eigenfrequencies. Our eigenfrequencies were printed twice. Um, so that's how you export the data to a file. This could then be read into MATLAB or any text editor. That concludes the tutorial for this lab. Sweet. Sure.